Hi and welcome to Wrong Way and today I'm gonna bust seven myths about electric unicycles. So let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. So these seven things are basically things I hear from pedestrians just you know asking me stuff on the street or friends that ride different vehicles like e-scooters or e-bikes about EUCs. So the thing I hear the most by far from people that I just, you know, meet randomly on the street or from friends of mine that never seen basically a EUC is I wouldn't be able to ride on it. And I gotta tell you what, it's not that hard. So the thing about EUC is, is that, yeah, you know, the, the moment when you decide to pull the trigger and you've never basically tried such a thing, is a big commitment from your side. But I'm here to tell you that it's actually not that hard to ride a electric unicycle. Recently, after five minutes, I taught my girlfriend to ride on, these, on this Gotway M103. It really was just five minutes and she started to ride a bit to the left, a bit to the right, started to accelerate and brake. You know, it's not a state where you already can go out on the street and ride or on a bicycle path, but it was enough to see that, well, you know, it's a start and you can handle it. Jack, a friend of mine, has taught around you know, three or four, maybe even five people already already uh, how to ride an electric unicycle. They came from an electric scooter background or e-skate uh, background. Yes, Adrian. And it really didn't take long for them, around maybe five, ten minutes or half an hour or maybe tops an hour to just get on this thing and ride a bit. You know, if it's a closed off space, just make circles left, right or just ride straight. But it works and I do believe that you watching, if you are thinking about a EUC, you can do it too. So essentially, I'll, I'll just show you how it works really simply. Um, the EUC is not as hard as a regular you know, pedal-based unicycle because front and rear, it does all the job for you. And they are powerful enough that even if you lean forwards really hard, which you definitely won't do at the beginning of your journey, it will just have enough power to get you into balance when it comes to accelerating and decelerating. So what it does basically, now I deactivate the motor. If you lean forwards, the motor will just keep spinning a bit faster to keep the wheel balanced. So if there's weight up in the front, it goes down the front. If there's weight, weight in the back, it goes into the back. Uh, when it comes to turning, you can see that, well, obviously the tire is round. So if you lean the EUC, it has a smaller diameter on this side and it doesn't, and the tire doesn't want to have friction and that's why it turns. If you go straight, it goes straight. If you lean it to the other side, it will turn. So it's really as simple as that. So it's not that hard to ride a electric unicycle. Number two on the list is, well, this must be so uncomfortable. And most of the EUCs at the time of recording this video do not have any suspension. But what they do have is a huge tire. The smallest unicycles, well, this is an exception, this is 10 inch tires, start around 14 inches, which is way bigger than most of the scooters on the market. But they top out at around 18, 20 inches, and maybe even 22, like on the Monster. So this this huge amount of rubber makes the ride really, really comfortable. On certain occasions, yes, it can bounce around a bit if you, you know, just uh, ride into a pothole, but it's actually not that bad. And it's really pleasurable to go off-road because you don't have a handlebar and the only vibrations are basically just coming from your feet. So that is also why off-roading on an electric unicycle is actually really, really enjoyable. I wouldn't really go off-road on any scooter, um, maybe except for the Dualtron X because, you know, this thing has amazing suspension. Um, as likely as I would just take basically any of my EUCs off-road because it's just so much fun and it's comfortable. After a while, maybe like 30 kilometers at the beginning or even 10, if you just started out, it can get uncomfortable. You can get strained in your feet mostly, but it's not really that hard and you can get accustomed to your EUC to ride for 50, 60 kilometers without any issues. I do ride my Vedran Sherman daily. It's a really comfortable unicycle, but I do around 50 to 100 
kilometers every day and you know it just works it's not a hassle and it's actually really comfortable the third myth is they're really expensive but actually if you look at the specs and what you're getting they're not so all the EUCs come with good lighting stuff you need to invest later on in uh, e-scooters they have uh, fast charge possibilities because they have a higher voltage in the system they have USB ports as you can see here RGB lighting a pretty big range I think a, a EUC with the same battery size as a scooter will have a bigger range because they're lighter and I think that their controllers are more efficient just uh, just an example for you um, the Joltron X which is a very expensive scooter um, has a smaller battery than the veteran Sherman which is basically half price of um, of the Dualtron X. So yeah, I, actually I think they're really good value for money and they're also really compact. So yeah, I, I think this myth, if, if it even exists actually, is, is already busted. Number four on the list is they are dangerous. And you know, if you ride on the edge all the time, well, they can be dangerous, but they're actually not that dangerous as you think. You can set up a speed limit on all EUCs um, just via an app and they will essentially tilt back like the the foot plates will go like this like to the back and they will force you to lean back once you reach a certain speed and there is a safe speed margin on every unicycle it's naturally better if you're a bit lighter then you can go a bit faster but for example if I set the speed limit to 60 kilometers an hour on my veteran Sherman I basically don't have any fear of cutting out or crashing because the motor doesn't have enough power maybe a, a below 40 percent or 30 percent I should watch out with you know extreme acceleration but they have several things implemented to keep them safe number one is they have safety you know beepers or alarms that will just alarm you once the machine is overpowered and the Sherman is at 70% in Gotways it's at 80% power use and that is one thing um, that they use in Kingstown you also have like a overpowered alarm and so on um, the second thing is naturally tilt back it's not it, you cannot turn off tilt back in King Song and in motion wheels you can in veteran and and Gotway. the next thing uh, they have is that uh, at a certain battery level they will start to tilting tilting you back so if the battery is really low you won't be able really to go fast because it's not because it's dangerous and you know the, the unicycle will just um, will just tilt you back at a such a certain speed so you can't even turn off this feature in Gotways or veterans it's just built in big into the system so unless you are tr you try to accelerate extremely at a low battery state you're pretty safe to go the cool thing is that if you were to fall on an EUC um, you don't have a handlebar so you can't go over the handlebar mostly uh, when it comes to falls or cutoffs or situations like these the unicycle just goes somewhere to the side and you fall just you know flat up in the front and you can uh, rest your hands with your wrist guards onto the onto the ground and if you have protectors well I think it's actually not that dangerous uh, to fall actually on a EUC so that is the fourth myth the fifth fifth myth <laughs> is what, what what if i hit a pothole or what if i get a flat on an euc let's first start with the pothole most of the time it's not really that dangerous to hit a small pothole or a manhole cover on an euc the the wheel will just bounce off and if you have a, a good set of foot plates like the nilanova foot plates which have spikes in them you the, you'll just pretty much stay glued on to the electric unicycle if you had a bigger one well you can damage the rim but most of the time i didn't fall off the electric unicycle the most dangerous thing you can hit like aside from a pothole on an electric unicycle is a um, a curb that you hit sideways or you know just a pole or a curl curb at too high speed but that's dangerous on all electric devices uh, when it comes to flats just change your tire regularly and in my you know 15 20 thousand kilometers on EUCs I never got a flat until now on uh, on EUC um, I think the tires are pretty robust I think that the fact that you only ride on one wheel 
it makes them also um, a bit more sturdy. I don't know how it works, but that's maybe just my uh, thought on it. I did experience um, in, in the Netherlands, yes, you know, a friend of mine got it in, uh, in the Netherlands. And uh, well, the thing that happens then, you break really fast, hard on, on the EUC, um, but you can run it out a bit. Like if you're running, if you're going really, really fast, then probably, um, you will just break a bit and then fall. But once again, I didn't get a single flat in um, the whole you know, lifetime of riding unicycles. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And once you get it, most of the time the tire will deflate slowly. So slowly enough to you know, uh, just reach a safe to just break off your speed and yeah, then, then you're good. You can also comment below what are your experiences on electric unicycles for those of you um, who are riding. The sixth myth is they can't handle harsh weather conditions or harsh road conditions. And tell you what, I was riding a Emotion V5F in the midst of the Finnish winter. This winter didn't finish because it was in Finland and it finishes in, I don't know when. We have to ask Boss Manati. Um, so I was riding the V5F throughout, uh, on black ice, on you know regular ice, on snow. And there's also a rider in Canada that rides his electric unicycle, or maybe several riders, you know, comment below if you're in Canada and riding EUCs that just go on their electric unicycles throughout the, the whole winter. So they can definitely handle snow and ice. You just need to be a bit slower than, as on every device. And they also can handle the rain. Most of the Gotway wheels and the Sherman do need any additional weather proofing um, to make them, you know, rainproof. When it comes to those King songs, well, sometimes you need to cover something. Emotions are also pretty good with weather proofing. Well, my V11 had the first batch of bearings, so it's, um, yeah, the bearing started to scratch but the next batch should be fine when it comes to warm weather conditions there's also new, no issues with that you just need to um, you know listen to the wheel if it starts overheating it will start to beep and that's how you know that you know it's it's just getting a bit too toasty you need to ride a bit slower so there's really no issues with riding electric unicycles in all weather conditions sometimes you need to get a better tire or just lower pressure but it's really no issue at all when it comes to bad road conditions well you can tell like the New York City crew, you know, they are, they're, they're fast guys. And I know that New York City streets are not the best. I, I think EVX can relate and Sean as well. And, you know, sometimes they can bounce off a bit higher, but uh, if you have, you know, good foot plates or if you're just an experienced rider and you know how, how to handle it, it will just bounce up and go right down. There is no danger that somehow in the air the unicycle will go in front of you or back to you. Most of the time you just land back on your foot plates if you go off of them. And if you hold the unicycle strong enough, you'll just keep bouncing with it. Yeah, New York City is, I think, the best example for that. Uh, they can definitely also handle off-road real well, as I mentioned before, and, you know, bad road conditions. And they're actually really comfortable uh, at handling it. And the seventh myth is, you know, they don't have as good of a performance as, as scooters or e-bikes. And, you know, at the top end, true, they can't really reach a super high speed safely. So on the veteran Sherman, I can usually go 50, 60, 65 kilometers an hour, you know, without any bigger hassle, you know, on a street. But I'm sure that on a dual trend thunder, I could go faster if I needed to. Most of the time I don't need, but if I needed to, it would be, it would feel a bit safer. But in terms of acceleration and turning and also the turning radius, going upstairs, downstairs and hill climbing, I think electric unicycles are the most OP here. And especially when it comes to hill climbing and hilly areas, I think electric unicycles are really, really good for that because they have super high torque. And on electric scooters, it's really easy to get the front motor spinning so it has no grip and it's harder to, you know, climb a certain steep hill. And on e-bikes, you can just do a wheelie if you don't have a long enough wheelbase or the right geometry of the frame. So I think that actually in terms of performance, electric unicycles are really, really, really good. And in terms of acceleration, I think that a Galway MSB can be actually faster with the right rider than a 011X. So if you would want to see that then just you know 
um, comment below. So I think that in terms of performance, yes, definitely electric unicycles are really, really OP. So this concludes my seven myths, hopefully busted rightfully about electric unicycles. And if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. And also huge, huge thanks to my majestic patrons over on Patreon. You help me out a lot. Thanks.